Welcome to the PDN Analyzer 2.0 On Demand Training. As we continue, Module 2 will provide detailed instructions on creating the setup of power networks for analysis. We'll start with the spirit level design. I'll go to Tools, PDN Analyzer, and the first time the PDN Analyzer is invoked on a new design, the DC Net Identification panel appears. Here, we can specify all of the power and ground nets required for our analysis. The tool will infer voltage values by net name if it can. However, it may need a little help on some nets, and you can specify these manually here simply by typing them in. Also, if there are any other nets that you know of which don't appear in the list, you can enable all nets for listing and you can manually find the net and include it in the list. Here, I know I need net D1 underscore 2, which is a 5 volt net, and now I can click Add Selected. The entire group appears over here and then I can hide these unrelated nets simply by selecting them and choosing Reject Selected. Once defined, the tool retains these as DC nets for quick reference. The PDN Analyzer panel is a free floating panel. However, if you're working in a single monitor display, this can get in the way, and what you'll want to do is put this into compact layout mode. That can be done here through the File button and choosing Compact Layout. Doing so reduces the panel by half, and you can toggle back and forth between the two halves by choosing the Config tab or the Visual tab. You can also dock this panel along the bottom where it's more convenient and makes the workspace visible. So now we can see our network and the source documents and continue working. I'll start to describe the network by clicking here, and it gives me a structure that we need to fill in. And what we're going to do is describe the 5 volt power rail and the 1.8 volt power rail. We'll intentionally leave out the 3.3 for now. To get started, I right click on the power net and say edit. And here, my DC nets are available to choose from. So I can choose the power net here, which is the main net coming in. Now, to continue this to get to 5 volts, I have to get through two series elements, and these need to be modeled in this path. To do so, I need to extend the power in net to this net, the D1 underscore 2 net, and I can simply right click, extend net, and then choose this and that creates a series element. I can refine this by choosing the F1 designator, and now that series element is modeled. I have to do the same thing again for S1, so we simply do extend net, choose the net we're extending to, and now define the series element as S1 for the switch. So now I have my complete power rail from power in to 5 volt. Now I'll specify ground. I can right click, edit, and choose the ground net. And now it's time to specify the source component, which is in this case J1. I right click, say add source. It's a standard voltage source and I'll choose J1. 5 volt is the output of that. And I can specify a max current, and I'll choose 3.5 amps. We'll click OK, and now I have this source component set. If I hover over it, it'll show the settings. Next, we can specify our load components. I'll start with the LCD panel and this has two separate power pin connections. Now, 
one power pin is providing voltage to the LED backlighting, and another power pin is supplying voltage to the control logic. I want to separate these two out, so first I'll model just the LED backlighting, which draws more current. I'll specify that load current here as 16 milliamps, I can just say 16M, and then I specify the min-max voltage range, the acceptable voltage, click OK, and I've set that portion of that component as a load. I can right-click again, say Add Load, and choose LCD one more time, double-click, and now this time I'll disable the LED backlighting circuit and just focus on the control logic power pin. This time I'll specify 2.5 milliamps and specify the acceptable voltage range. Click OK. And I have two separate load values for the one component. So you can have multiple loads within a component. Next, I'll include the U4 voltage regulator, which is a linear regulator. It has 5 volts in and produces 1.8 volts output. The reference is connected to ground through series resistance. So to model that, I simply choose Add Load, but this time, because the voltage regulator is a special device, I'll choose VRM Linear and then set the power net that is the output. Now I can choose U4 and for the reference path to ground I'll choose the R19. I'll set the correct voltage level which is 1.8 and then a maximum current output of 3 amps. I'll click OK and now that load is all set and ready to go. At this point I want to create a new network for this 1.8 voltage. To do so I can right click on the load and say add VRM to new network. When I do that, it creates an entirely new network to represent the independent voltage rail of 1.8 volts. And as you can see over here, here's my top level 5 volt net and now the new 1.8 volt net. So it inherits that information from the higher level description and these two voltage rails now can interact with each other. So this VRM is a load in the 5 volt net and a source in the 1.8 volt net. I just need to add a load here and specify the U1 component and I can further remove any non-power connections to ground and these are just logic level connections. I'll specify a load current of 0.9 amps, again the min-max acceptable voltage range, and that works out that percentage, so we have our load complete. So from a high level we have our main voltage net of 5 volts, and then we have our lower level voltage rail of 1.8 volts. I'll now save this description to what's referred to as a configuration file. So I can do Save As, and I simply want to save this to a file name of Network. We'll explore a more complete network description later, but for now we'll just focus on an analysis of these two specific voltages. This concludes Module 2. Here we have seen how to define power networks in terms of power and ground nets and source and load components. In Module 3, we will discuss defining the analysis settings and configurations and actually run an analysis. Please complete Exercise 2 at this time.